Right, last time we looked at the train, um, this time I'm going to look at a few other things. Um, I've What I've done, I've uh, I, there's no point in me showing you all the different trains, um, so I've just set the same route up in reverse. So we've got the same double set, we've got, uh, the, we're on the um, Dusseldorf Cologne uh, route, we don't want any filters on really, um, and instead of starting from Cologne, I am... Um, because we've got Cologne, Cologne Mesodois, you see, is the station in Cologne that you start from, and then you go to Dusseldorf. So I'm going to start from Dusseldorf, um, which, let's see if they've got, what have they got, Dusseldorf? I don't know what the main um, station is called, it's usually called the Hauptbahnhof. It's not Benrath, I don't know. It's got, it's, it's, it's Volksgarten. And then, uh, oh no, actually no, here we are, look, we're starting from Dusseldorf. And we want to go to Cologne. Now if we're starting from Cologne, we could start from cologne messe which is the main station. But I don't, I want to start from Dusseldorf and end at uh, cologne messe but all of a sudden it's vanished. Don't ask me why. So we'll go to cologne Mulheim. And um, the environment, uh, I'm not really bothered. Let's have a change, give you a change of scenery. Confirm. Go. So, I'll keep quiet while this loads so you don't have to watch it load. Holy cow, did you see that? I don't know how long that took, but that was a good two minutes of uh, adverts, various adverts. Now I'm going to switch to, uh, we're going to put the lights on at the front, because for some reason everything's set up for you, except the lights, and just show you that we are, in fact, not at all where I thought we were going to be. We are, in fact, at Cologne Mulheim. Oh, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. But, well, we look like we're somewhere near Frankfurt because I recognise that um, pointy building over there. Anyway, the signal's red, so um, I'm going to just try and work out what's going on with the signals because you'd expect to be given a green signal, wouldn't you? Unless I haven't let the passengers on. So let's open the doors. Opening the doors is this load and unload here. No, it doesn't want to let me load or unload. So it's not because we're not loaded or unloaded. All the passengers are frozen. Let's press uh, tab. So I have got a request to pass signal at danger denied, so it's not like I can drive through the red. Um, the red light. Let's go to world view and see if there's something else coming. No. It looks like it is the main station, doesn't it? Might no, I don't think it is. Oh, I don't know. Well, that's the that's the end of the line there. And I don't know what's down here. That's another end of the line, isn't it? So I assume that that must be the main station. There we are. So perhaps we have guessed it correctly. It doesn't mean that we're not stuck, though, does it? We're still stuck. Right. Let's go to the overhead view. Or as they call it, the 2D map. I'm using the mouse wheel to um, zoom out, zoom in and out. And you can click and hold the right mouse key and move the map. And you see, it put us at the bottom of the map, didn't it? To start off with. And But, but we are in fact at the top of the map, we're here. And we are at the main station here. And this is the signal that's holding us up here. 
Um, and we need to get onto this line here, one of them anyway. Um, and as I say, they drive on the right, so um, it's going to be those, the green lines are platforms, so I presume it's going to be one of these two here. Now, almost certainly the reason why we can't get onto, we can't get through the red line is because we're not cleared through it. And the reason why we're not cleared through it is because there's no path. So we need to get over to the left hand side and we'll probably have to do that by setting some of the points. Now you can see the blue line here, the way see where it's blue there and blue here. That shows us where we're going to go. So if we follow the blue line through, it takes us to about here, doesn't it? Uh, it carries on. It takes us through to here. We're still blue here. We're still blue here. And that's where the blue line ends. So it doesn't it doesn't go blue for the whole route. It just goes blue for certain distance ahead. So we're going to be on the Dusseldorf Ella North Strasse track one by the look of it. But it still doesn't explain why we're stuck at a red line. And this is what I'm I was trying to just tell you that the thing is is bust. Incidentally, if you can't find your train, just click center player and it will center on the train and um, in fact that what gives us a clue as to why we can't go anywhere can't it is because the trains actually pointed backwards it's pointed backwards for the route that we're intending to do which is go south it's actually trains pointing north <laughs> oh dear so can we turn the train round let's go back and have a look we're pointing the wrong way what we can do we can jump through the carriages now that when you do that and you're in the cab view it doesn't jump you through all the carriages because there's no driver's point of view in any other carriages other than the front and the back so basically you can move to the other end of the train but here the light is still red let's just put it in forward let's see if we can I'll press tab it's still not letting us go through the red light Let's go back to the 2D view. Centre on the player. Right, now it is at least it is telling us that we are in the correct end of the cap. But it's still not letting us go anywhere, is it? Now, what, what I'm going to do is something you just have to do with this programme, and that is you just have to go through red lights. and Which is a shame, because all of the work they've done into all this signalling system is worth nothing if you have to go through red lights just to get the train moving and I'm not talking about going through red lights when there's another train in the way or going through red lights because you feel like it what, I'm, what I mean is like, trying to trying to obey the signal access <laughs> trying to obey the signalling system and not being rewarded for trying to obey the signalling system. Fortunately, um, it doesn't really matter because you can turn off the um, any consequences for going through the red lights. What we're going to do is we're going to set the um, speed limiter to 40. Let me just decelerate. Now, assuming I can focus on it, here it is. RFB. RFB. Now, I that was on 40 when I let it go, it's now on 50. Do you see that? It was on 40 when I let it go, and it's now on 50. Let's try one more time. 40, let go, and it's done it. Third time lucky. So now you can put the throttle up as fast as you like. Basically, the throttle at this point just controls the acceleration. Uh, and when you get to the correct speed it'll sort of flatten off. So we're up to 80 now. Now I'm going to keep it slow for the time being because I'm going to go back to this overhead and show you, you can see that we're making progress on the overhead here. And as we make progress we'll get more, more and more of the track will light up blue. 
so we're down to about here now and you can change the points so um, if you want to change the points then you can do that and you know in sort of a shunting scenario but I'm I'm not at all convinced we're on the right track we may be we may be but I'm yes I think we probably are because that looks like a two bypass lines here and we would be on the right hand one going south so I think we probably are all right but you know but on the other hand let's center the player um, and then now it, what you can do is you can leave it like that and uh, zoom out a bit and then when you go to it it will um, um, it will um, show you uh, it will stay centered on your train so we can go up to 80 now so let's try and get a focus on that and pop it up to 80 so 80 let go gone up to 90 let's try again up to 80 let go gone up to 90 okay 80 let go gone up to 90 let's see if it's let's sit down sit down well now we're on 160 what you need for this is a key it needs to be by, bound to a key not see 160 gone up to 170 160 170 again 160 160 it stayed there so frustrating <sighs> if if it was bound to a key then you could put the, sp the speed limiter up and down with a key couldn't you and you could just tap it let's just put the lights on again because the lights are all back to front let's just jump out and check that the lights are on yes they are jolly good now the problem is that we don't know um, if we're going to go rocketing up a side siding at this point I absolutely got no I've got absolutely no idea we're coming up to a signal these these are the signals here so I don't know whether it's going to be red you can you can if you look on the map you can see whether it's going to be red or not it looks like it's green so there we are so we're okay and there it is there you can if you press the up arrow and by arrows I'm talking about the cursor keys not the cursor keys on the keypad but the main cursor keys you can zoom in and get a sort of a quite an artificial um, telescopic uh, view of what's ahead and that's and that's that can be useful certainly useful for looking at um, signals that are coming up the distances here you're seeing are the distance that the signal is away in kilometers and these are um, markers that uh, count down to the various signals on the track um, and if you drive mainly continental trains you have to learn the continental signals and vice versa um, but I'm pleased to say it's got it's sophisticated enough now for um, you not to need to sort of zoom in too much to see the signals this is the the green signal you can see the train looks to be going a lot slower than it is um, on on a zoomed in perspective when you zoom out again it uh, starts going back to the sort of um, speed that you expect right what else can I tell you that's uh, that is the zoom in and zoom out but in fact if you've got a mouse um, key then um, a mouse a mouse wheel then that's by far and away the best uh, most effective way of doing it if you do choose to drive the train uh, with an alerter system active then uh, and in particular the um, the British trains tend to work quite well in this respect um, I put a uh, let's just um, I th there's a queue key what happens is you get a, a warning sign comes up like a big uh, yellow and black uh, indicator and you have to press a key to acknowledge the warning what it it will warn you if you go if you go for a red light and you've got it set up to uh, stop 
if it goes through a red light then it will go through it will it will stop no amount of pressing the warning light will stop it and, and then it will stop and come to a stop and then once it's stopped you have to release the brakes reset the put put it in forward and then re-accelerate uh, no doubt right out of form in triplicate um, if you are if you've got for example a, a signal coming up which is not green then again you will almost certainly get a warning uh, indicator in which case you'll need to either press the button or I think it's Q press Q to acknowledge the warning and that will clear the warning the yellow and black thing will still stay so that if you did think to yourself oh, do you know I can't remember was that a warning last one did, did I get a warning on that last signal you can look and it will remain there as a record of the fact that you did get a warning and you cleared it you cleared the, the oral signal anyway if not the visual signal um, if you get a warning and you don't clear it in time then uh, the train will stop again so and I think if memory serves me correctly the English system is quicker than the continental system so um, we the, the uh, Brits are a bit um, less tolerant about uh, drivers um, dozing on the job um, we've got <laughs> we've got a second or so they have they have like four or five seconds you know they've got time to put down their um, perno and their uh, copy of the Figaro and um, press the button whereas we have to <laughs> we have to be on the spot on it otherwise uh, big trouble now uh, again while we're doing this um, oh, a quick overview really just to give you an idea of whether you think you might like this or not um, this is a G meter on the bottom left it's um, not really re I mean it's not really relevant to how you drive the train because um, normally th these trains are so sluggish to accelerate and decelerate that um, you're unlikely but there are um, sometimes uh, scenarios that require you to um, stay within certain G G force limits um, and certainly on the scenarios you tend to get marked on marked down for high G uh, maneuvers uh, this is an information panel it's obviously got your current time it's got your st station that you're expected at and what platform what you're expected to do there we're expected to stop uh, and it's this is a waypoint um, and it's telling us the next waypoints in just under 17 kilometers and um, it's not uh, I don't know it's got the estimated time of arrival I think to the destination and then that's the estimated time of arrival to the um, waypoint so um, this is the current that you're drawing from the lines which um, is probably more relevant when you're driving sort of big uh, the big American freight trains um, having said that it's, it's of interest only more than any practical use um, the controls you probably know anyway but um, this is uh, wheel brakes it's not really a good idea to use a hundred percent I tend to use 60%, 80% if I want to stop quickly, 100% only if I can see something on the line I'm going to crash into. Um, this is the, uh, is the lever that uh, tells the engine whether to work forwards or backwards. You don't really use that in anything other than forward uh, motion. And then um, this is the throttle or the accelerator which as I say you will use on short trips but on a long trip like this it's we've got the whole thing on auto and in fact we could we could have that back a bit and we'd still our speed wouldn't change because we've still got enough acceleration on there to maintain the 160 um, I was gonna say knots there but we're not flying a plane are we 160 kilometers an hour that um, we need to maintain on the free roam scenarios um, there are no other trains and it's a shame because really you know how realistic is it not to see another train how great would it be if there were there were other trains 
um, now I appreciate that if your signaling systems broke um, you don't want to put other trains on do you? It's just be crashing all the time so I can understand why they're doing it but selling such a large amount of downloadable content for a game that is intrinsically not working properly I think is a bit of a tra problem the other thing is that there's absolutely no multiplayer which is it's a shame and you might say well it's a train how could you have multiplayer um, you know and if if that was true then of course um, uh, trains wouldn't need uh, you know we'd have one person running all the trains in England wouldn't we I mean of course it's a it's a multiplayer activity you need to have someone uh, I mean you could at the very least give someone access to the 2D view and let them change the points and keep an eye on you so they could act as an, um, uh, effectively a signal box uh, and I when I play online and play online with my uncle and he, he'd be very happy with that job he's not you know on the basis that when he was driving the train I would make sure he didn't end up going up the siding at 165 miles an hour uh, and it has happened there's the Bayer works again by the way that's um tells us that we're nearly there I'll be interested to see what happens when we get back because um, I don't know whether we're going into the main station or not, it may be Mulheim as a station in Germany, just incidentally there's about 20 Mulheims so um, the one I tend to go to when I'm visiting my friends in Germany is Mulheim and der Ruhr on the Ruhr and um, God help you if you go into a ticket uh, office and ask for Mulheim because they'll just look at you blankly. Um, the other funny thing is that uh, if you go into if you buy a ticket from a ticket office, it's more expensive than uh, buying it from a machine. And they don't tell you. They don't say, oh, "Well, I, you know, that'll be X from us and Y from machine." They just sell it to you, and you end up paying 10% over the odds. We've got a 130 mile an hour speed limit coming so we're going to um, knock it back to 130 which is done perfectly look at that now what will happen is it will it will only decelerate naturally it won't apply any braking so it will apply acceleration to get you up to a speed but it but it'll only let air resistance and rolling resistance slow you down uh, and in fact we've got an 80 limit coming up now so we're going to go down to 80 now if you, did you see what I did there? I put it to 70 and, and relied on that bug to take it up to 80. Well I thought it was clever. Um, and the other thing while we're talking about German railways is that um, they, their um, timetables are arranged in the most extraordinary way. In England if you want to get from A to B you we, we have it indexed by station so you look up the station and it tells you when is the next train from that station to the station that you want to go to but over there they don't index by destination they index by time because they assume that you know what train you want and that really what you want to know is when is the next train that's leaving and from what platform uh, so if you are leaving for a station and it's an intermediate station in other words if it's not the um, not the destination but but one that's halfway along the route perhaps even one of the smaller stations um, you just don't you just can't find it you have to stand there and literally read every single train every single destination to see if you can see your destination and then you can then from knowing the header for the train in other words where it's where it's going to you can then work out what platform to get on and which is the next train to that particular destination see there's a yellow up there so but we're, we're doing fine going to Col Cologne Mulheim 3 so here we are so we're not going into Cologne we are going to uh, are we going into Cologne? yeah we are Cologne Mulheim I don't know why they call it Mulheim it's Hauptbahnstrasse Hauptbahnstrasse ha Hauf High, Barn, Railway, Hof, Hauptbahnhof, Hauptbahnhof. God, I shan't be releasing any more of these until I've had a 
look at a German podcast. So what have we got? A red light. Brilliant. No, it's not red. It's red and green. I'm going to um, take off the the what's it. And we're going to keep it up because we can still go 60. Oh, yeah, well, obviously we take the brakes off, we'll go 60. Now, the fact that it's indicating Cologne Mulheim 3 is good because that does mean that um, we, we've probably effectively got a path cleared through to that. So if we go back to the 2D map and just zoom out and then unclick the center player or drag drag with the right hand side and you can see where we're cleared through to. So we're cleared through to here. So that looks like a marshalling yard. Oh, let's get back quick because I think we're there. Cologne Mulheim 3. If you take the brakes off, there is um, a delay in depressurizing them. I'm going to just have a quick look at the... Uh, how we're doing here with regard to the platform. Not ideal, is it? But then, you know, this half of the uh, a train is nowhere near the platform. So I assume that uh, if you wanted to get off at this station, you had to get in the first carriage or two, or at least in the front half of the train. It's not exactly rooted to me. It hasn't rooted to me to the longest um, platform, has it? Now the other thing, and this annoys me, is that. Uh, if you put in a quick drive scenario and you stop at the station uh, that's it there's no option to um, carry on can you see this bloke here look there's some terrible uh, accident has occurred down there that's left everybody with no legs that's because the scenery designer has put the layer that generates the passengers at a different vertical height to the actual um, skin of the platform and if you can imagine that that's the sort of mistake that uh, an experienced designer of one of their flagship routes can make then uh, it gives you an idea of how difficult it is to design your own scenery so look I've done I've been a bit sort of negative about this thing and uh, which is a shame because it's not I mean it's fun to play it's fun to play I've had fun I've I enjoyed driving that that was good if you've got a sort of decent enough computer and this has got a 660 Ti graphics card um, and you're prepared to sort of put up with the niggles then by all means you know have some fun with it and do do design a, a track or whatever you know you can have a lot of fun with it but it's you know I mean I've got to say to the developers I mean come on you know please what what happened <laughs> every year you bring out this is like the second update annual update I've had for certain and all of these problems have always been in it I don't know you, you seem to be spending all your time trying to make money by producing more and more downloadable content and none fixing the basic problems like the fact that you've only got three passengers and they all um, you know march up and down and and do stupid things like this and the fact that there's no multiplayer and the fact that uh, this computer's got 16 megs of RAM and you know it spends all that time loading it's like it's not it's like it's written in a meta language um, almost it's almost like it's written in something that's uh, a compiled language and it, al and it has to like, recompile itself every time and uh, and also having bought a game you do not want to sit through a load of adverts for downloadable content I mean, what do you think the Flight Simulator community would do if Flight Simulator X 
treated you to two minutes worth of adverts for planes that you don't own every time you went for a flight. This is just not acceptable. It's not like you give the base game away for nothing. You don't. You charge for it. And we pay for it and then it's advertising supported and uh, and uh, and and you have to pay for it. That's just too greedy. Okay, just get a grip. You've got a nice little golden goose here. You, it must be generating cash for you now. You've okay. You put a lot of hard work into it, and uh, it's paid off. That's great. You've got a great game. That its network effect means it's going to do well. Just don't forget the core simmers. You know who um, who uh, want to every time a new one comes out they don't just want slightly nicer rain or uh, slightly better um, fog effects on the lighting they want they want passengers that aren't cut off at the, at the hip okay well that's it that's uh, that's a pretty good uh, rundown of everything I found all the positive and the negative things uh, so but as I say I would recommend it if you like trains I would recommend it and uh, just get out of it what you can which will be a lot Look at that plant.